Hey folks, welcome to Resolve and Post. My name is Gary and in this video I'm going to show you how to create the Venetian blinds effect in DaVinci Resolve Fusion and I'll also show you just a few different ways on how you can apply this effect. So here we are in our Fusion page and I have already laid out the essential nodes that we'll need to create our Venetian blinds, which is a background node, a scanline node, and a Luma Kier node. It's worth pointing out that there are actually two different kinds of scanline nodes in Fusion. So let me show you if I open the select tools window by pressing shift space bar on my keyboard and then type in scanlines, you'll notice that there are two options to choose from, um, both of which are spelled exactly the same way. So that adds a little bit of confusion. I do know that the one we'll need for this effect to work is in fact the bottom one, but for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to be bringing in both of these scanlines into our node editor so I can show you the difference and show you why it is the bottom one that we need. So let's first bring in the top one into our node editor and immediately I'm going to rename this to top scanline and we'll do the same to bring in the bottom one and rename this to bot scanline bot as in bottom not bot as in robot <laughs> but i'm sure you knew that <laughs> so now let's turn our attention to the inspector panel here and as i alternate between these two scanline nodes you'll see that each of them has its own set of parameters now in short the one that we'll need is this one in particular this one allows us to adjust the line width which i'll show you in just a bit how that works Whereas the top one, the top scan line, that one, it has most of the essentials, but it's missing that line with parameter to adjust. So um, I'm going to be deleting this. And in fact, I'm going to be removing these as well so I can show you how to build it from ground up. And let's first start off by dragging this one, our scan line node into our viewer. You'll notice that there is nothing here and that's because we need some sort of source to pipe into this, uh, this node which in this case, we will use a background node. And once piped in, you'll see that it still doesn't look right. It's all black, um, but an easy fix to this is to go into our scanline node, scroll all the way down in the inspector, and under composite type, we wanna change this from overlay to normal. And once we do that, we start to see something. Now, while we're still in the inspector of our scanline node, scroll all the way up, and under appearance here, let's go over one by one of each of these parameters. Most of these are self-explanatory, but it's just worth going over. So line frequency, we can adjust this to increase the number of lines or reduce the number of lines in our scan line here. A line sharpness, for the most part, we're gonna leave this at its maximum value to add sharpness to the line. So if I zoom in a bit, you'll notice that there's a bit of blur, but increasing it to its maximum value, which by default is two adds a little bit of sharpness, but if you zoom in even further, you'll notice that the, the, the edges are still a bit blurry. So we can actually override this by manually inputting a greater number, which in this case, the upper limit is five. So I'm just going to go ahead and type in five. And that does add a little bit more sharpness. If you go over five and input the number 10, um, you'll notice that it still reverts to the upper limit of five. Okay, um, let's zoom to fit. Line angle, pretty self-explanatory. We can use this to adjust the lines, but for the most part, we're not going to be adjusting the, the line angle from this window. And I'll show you in just a minute, a better way to adjust the line angle. Line width, again, self-explanatory, adjust the width of the line. As for line shift, this one is to adjust the initial placement or vertical placement of the lines. So if I zoom in by default, if we leave it at zero, you'll notice that like a piece of the black line is cut off. What you can do is use line shift to shift it downwards or upwards to remove that black line or probably include the whole black line. You know, depends just how much of a compulsive disorder you have. We'll just leave it at zero. Um, and for the most part, at least for this video, we're not going to be playing around with line shift. So let's zoom to fit. And we need one more node here to complete our essential building blocks for the Venetian blinds, and that is a Luma Kier. So I'm going to bring in a Luma Kier into our pipeline. And if I drag this to our viewer, you'll notice that the black part is now transparent, All right? So these are the three essential building blocks for our Venetian blinds. And from these three nodes here, we are going to use this to create um, a couple of other effects 
uh, which I'll get into shortly. But on top of these three nodes, what I like to do is add two additional nodes and we can call this like the adjustment notes. So I'm going to bring in a background node and I'm going to bring in a transform node. So what I'm going to do is pipe in the Lumacir into the background and then the background into the transform. So as for the background node, we can actually use this node here to change the color of our lines. And this is the main purpose of this background is to change the color and also change the frame size in the image page. You can change the frame size, which I'll demonstrate in just a bit, but I'll just leave it at 1920 for now. Okay, um, so the main purpose of this node again is to change color. So, so actually I'll go ahead and rename this to color. <laughs> Now, as for the transform node here, we can use this to adjust the position of the lines or animate the lines, which I'll show you uh, in one of the effects that we'll cover today. And um, you probably notice that as I reposition this, let's say upwards or to the left, that we have this blank or this empty zones. We can easily fix that by changing the edges from canvas to wrap. Okay, so now... Um, no matter where we position it, we will still have this uh, seamless continuation of the scan lines, which will also work really well when we adjust the angles, like so. All right, so uh, now what we're gonna do is build on top of this. We have the building blocks, we have the uh, adjustment blocks, and now we we can start building like the, the creative portion, okay? so. The first one that I want to show you is for uh, creative masking. Okay, let's just call it creative masking for now. So what we're going to do is pull up uh, another background node. And I'm just going to connect the output of this transform node to the output of this newly created background node to automatically merge it with the background node being positioned in the background as indicated by the yellow connector. And then if we bring this into our viewer, you'll notice that the background is now black. We can adjust the, the color of the background, but I'm just going to leave it as transparent for now. So I'm going to drag down the alpha value here. So now that we have this structure here going on, all we have to do is just stick things into this blue arrow here, which is the mask input. So let's say if I wanted the Venetian blinds to take the shape of a circle, well, easy. I can just bring in an ellipse node pipe this ellipse node to this blue arrow here and voila with the ellipse node still selected we can use this to adjust the size the shape or the roundedness and we can always go back to the scan line node here to adjust the line frequency you know to your heart's content let's just use a round number eight i think that looks cool and we can go back to this transform node here and change the angle to say 45 degrees awesome Right. If red isn't working out for you, then we can always change the color to, I don't know, white or say orange. All right. So obviously, if the circle isn't working for you, we can always use a square or rectangle. So let's go ahead and bring in a rectangle node, rectangle node. And let's pipe this in in replace of the ellipse node. And boom, now we have a square. We can adjust the size of the square to our heart's content. <laughs> And of course, this isn't limited to shapes, but we can also even use text. So I'm going to bring in a text node. And let's just drag this into our viewer real quick so we know what we're typing. And let's just type in resolve in post. All right, a shameless plugin. So let's increase the size and let's change the weight to extra bold. Now let's pipe this in place of the rectangle node and see what we have. Boom. That looks nice. We'll probably need to increase the line frequency just a bit like so. Very good. Very cool. OK, and, you know, it doesn't end there. We can even turn this into a drop shadow. So I'm just going to scoot this over to the right just a little bit. Media out. We don't need you just yet. So this might get a little tricky, but just try to bear with me. What I can do is I can connect this text note to the output of this merge node. So I'm just kind of like piping it into itself. And if I bring this into our viewer, we have, well, this. So we're no longer seeing this one into our viewer. That's because this text node is positioned directly on top of this one, the one with the Venetian blinds. So what we can do 
is um, let me just bring this merge node into our viewer we can bring in a transform node and pipe it right in between these merge nodes here so to pipe it in we can hold down shift and then click and drag on this transform node right on top of this connector until the connector changes color and once it's released it's automatically piped in with the transform node selected i'm going to drag this arrow here which should reposition our text that has the venetian blinds so that it acts sort of like a drop shadow a really cool drop shadow right and the cool thing about this is we can always go back to this text node here and we can change this to whatever you want like um hello world and yeah and the drop shadow venetian blind will still adjust itself to the text and if you want to change the color we can always go back to this color node here and change it to something more suitable say um black <laughs> we can't see that so let, let me just pipe this into another background node so let's bring a background node and i want the background node to be white and then let's pipe in the output of this merge node to the output of this background node to merge them and voila <laughs> all right now we have to change the color of the text so uh, let's change this to orange i don't know what it is with me in orange but all right great so hello world let's change this back to our shameless plugin resolve in post subscribe now <laughs> all right forget about this one okay so uh the next effect that we'll be doing is something a little bit more abstract um we're going to be creating this hypnotic abstract look so what i'm going to do now is copy the building blocks along with this one here the uh, adjustment blocks and I'm going to paste this down here. And let me just bring this into our viewer. So I'm going to reset a couple of the parameters here of the scan line. I'm going to, um, oh, these are already reset. Um, then I'm just going to bring down the line frequency to, to say three. And I'm going to also uh, change the color back to white. And in the transform node, I'm going to reset the center values and the angle. All right, so it's looking like this. So um, what I want to do now is is uh, pipe this one into a coordinate space node. If you don't know what that is, it's hard to explain. It's better that I just show you. So type in coordinate space in the select tools window to bring it up. And then we'll just pipe this into this one. All right now, if we bring this up, boom. Uh, what coordinate space does is it changes like the circle values to rectangular and the rectangular values to cir circular or polar in this case. Uh, it's not doing that now. And that's because we have to go to the inspector and change the shape type from rectangular to polar. We're going to change this to polar to rectangular and boom. Now it doesn't look like a circle and that's because we have to change the aspect ratio. And in order to do that, we can go back to this one here, our color node which is actually a background node and because it is a background node what we can do is go to the the image tab and then we can change the aspect ratio so we're going to deselect this auto resolution and then we're going to change this to 1080 by 1080 and when i press enter boom it changes the aspect ratio to one to one and now if we bring back our coordinate space into our viewer you'll see that it is a perfect circle this time and now what we want to do next is animate this so that it ripples outwards. So I'm going to bring back the transform node into our viewer. And then we're going to be animating our transform node so that the lines are moving upwards vertically. So let's bring our playhead back to frame zero. And then I'm going to add a keyframe by clicking this button over here for the center values. And then I'm going to go all the way to the end of the timeline. And then I'm going to increase the Y value about like so. Or we can adjust that later if it's um, too fast or too slow. Now let's play this back. All right, that's pretty good speed. Now, if we bring this coordinate space back to our viewer, if we take a look, it gives it that hypnotic look. All right, so you can even adjust the angle. So let's go back to our transform node here. And then we can adjust the angle to give it more of a swirly look rather than a ripple look. Uh, but in order to adjust the angle, we're going to need to zoom in a little bit more. 
and then we're going to make some really, really fine adjustments. You can do that by holding down the Alt key and then dragging on the, uh, the input values here, dragging it to the left or to the right to make finer adjustments. So what we want to achieve here is to um, line these up nicely like so, so, so that it animates uh, seamlessly like that. And you could probably use this to hypnotize people. You will subscribe to my channel and you will click on the bell notification icon to receive notifications for more awesome videos like this. All right, I think this tutorial ran longer than expected, but anyway, hope it was worth your while and hope to see you guys on the next one.